Hi everybody. We've now learned how both to create database tables and how to insert information into those tables. In this video, we're going to look at a design principle called first normal form, or 1NF. So here we have some information about the characters in Detroit Become Human. So I have the character name there. It's a video. Detroit Become Human is a video game, a PlayStation 4 video game. So here I have the character name Kara. The voice actor was Valerie Curry. The hometown of Valerie Curry was Orange County, California, and Valerie Curry was born on February 12, 1986, and so on. And as you can imagine, there's many different ways of encoding this information into a database table. One way is we could just have one a database table of one column called info. So here I've created a table with just info, and all the information is just stashed in that one column. So this is just one huge long text string. Maybe not that huge or long, but it's a long string. <laughs> And, you know, the information is in one column. We might think, well, maybe there's a better way we could, you know, divide it up some well, somehow semantically that this first little bit seems to be the character name. The second bit here, Valerie Curry, is the voice actor. This is the hometown and so on. So we might have columns for that sort of information. So here's where I've done that. So we have this character information, actor, hometown, and when they were born. Or we might think, well, wait, Valerie Curry, you know, that's a first name and a last name. So maybe we should kind of divide that information up. Maybe that would be better. And this hometown has a hometown and then the state associated with it. So maybe that would be good to divide up as well. So that might be an option too. So we could design something along like this, where we have a character, the first name, the last name, the hometown, the home state, and when they were born. Well, we could keep going like this and think, well, born, hmm, there's like a year, a month, and a date. Maybe we should divide those up into separate columns, so something along these lines. Or maybe we think, hmm, you know, maybe this should be in multiple database tables and not just one. So we might have information like this. So here we have an actor table, and we have a character table. And see, we have character Karas played by actor ID 1. And actor ID 1 is Valerie Curry, and so we have all this information about the actor up in this table. So what we're trying to do is determine, well, what is the best option? You know, which which of these four or five things we've just presented is, is a, the best one? I think we can probably all agree that this is not the way to go, to put all the information just in one column. But what is a good way? Well, a guy named Edgar Codd, one of the really big names in databases, came up with some guidelines way back in 1971, which he called database normalization. And in this video, we're going to talk about that first one, the first normal form, or 1NF. So it's basically a design principle for databases and database tables. So there are two rules for first normal form. The first one is each row of data must contain atomic values. And the second one is each row of data must have a unique identifier called the primary key. So we're going to go through these one by one. The first one's more kind of nuanced and has a little more bits than the second one. So what do we mean by atomic values? Well, there's a couple things here. One is that data in a column should not be able to be broken down further into parts and I, in parentheses there I stuck for your current purposes. So this is sort of a wishy-washy rule so where we always can append, well it depends on you know what you're trying to do, what, what, what you're going to be using this database for. So let's go back to that Detroit Become Human. I'm going to just back up a bit. So that is can we break it down further into parts? That's sort of our rule. Can the data in a column be broken down further into parts? If it can, then it's not atomic. So Detroit become human. We have that information that we talked about. And here's one possibility. And now the question is, does it violate this constraint that we can't divide up the data into parts for this column? Well, clearly, that's not the case. We can divide it up. So we have Cara here, and we can divide that up, and Valerie Curry in Orange County, California. So we can divide up this information into kind of recognizable parts. So that's not atomic data. So let's look at that next option we had. So here we divided it up, right? So this Kara, clearly we can't divide that column up, and we've made these other columns. And now the question is, is this atomic or not? And here's where we kind of get into that it depends category, as we'll talk about in a bit. 
one other option is we could say that, well, this isn't atomic. We can divide up Valerie Curry into first name and last name, and we can divide up this hometown into the town name and the state name. So we can do something like that. And now we can go, well, is this atomic? Can we divide up are all columns such that you know we can't divide the information in, in a column into some recognizable units? Well, you might argue, well, this born looks kind of wacky, you know, right? There's this year here we could divide up in the month and the day. So sure, we could divide that up. And here's where that little nuanced, wishy-washy part of the rule is for the purposes of what we're trying to do. This probably would be the wrong way to do it. So you have to kind of view atomic in kind of a realistic way, not kind of an, as a hard and fast rule of how, you know, how much can we divide this up. And it really depends on what the function is of what your, what your database table needs to do. So let me just go back to names, for example. So look at you know, this actor Valerie Curry as one name versus the first name, last name feature is one better than another. And there's pros and cons in either way, and you can see this is where all this wishy-washiness comes in. So if it was this way, the first name, last name, one pro is you can personalize communication. You can say, Dear Ms. Curry, or Dear Brian, or Dear Jesse, or whatever. And this might be required for whatever, if we're working somewhere, it might be required for the field, like if it, we're working designing medical databases, maybe we need this first name, last name, or government databases. And it's probably the safer choice because we can always go back, maybe, and, and combine them. But one problem is, is that, and might be in favor of just doing it this way with everything combined, is that maybe first names and last names aren't sufficient. So consider Samuel L. Jackson. That L is sort of important as part of his name, but we'd lose that information or have to kind of stick it in here somehow if we had this first name, last name, this this version, it would be very simple to put in. A title like MD, PhD, Junior, or Valerie Curry the Third. again, it'd be trivial to put that information in here. It'd be more of a head-scratcher to figure out, well, how are we going to represent that information here? Maybe we'd, for some reason, need to have a title and some prefix title versus a postfix title. And in many cultures, this first name, last name distinction is meaningless. And we might have to go th with things like surname or given name. Some Latin American names have two last names, one from each parent. So you can see that, you know, as we, you know, this first name, last name isn't the, the absolute best because we can divide up, let me just go back again, this actor into parts. There's pros and cons either way. And again, the rule is, you know, can we divide it up into its individual components for the purposes of what we're trying to do? So keep that in mind that it's not really a, a hard and fast rule. Let me move on here. The second one is hard and fast and more easy to understand than this wishy-washy one I just gave you. And it's in two parts. You can't have several values of the same type in a single column. And by type, I don't mean like integer or whatever. You'll see shortly what I mean by that. And you can't have multiple columns with the same type of thing. So two parts. So let me show you the first one. You can't have several values of the same type in a single column. And let's look at this example where I'm trying to encode information. I have software developers in a, several offices, and I'm trying to represent what programming languages they're fluent in. So Ann Mulkern works out of the Detroit, Michigan office and knows Python and JavaScript. Ben Rhodes knows Go and Java, and so on. So here's one version of my developer database table. And here I've represented, I have first name, last name, city, state, and then the languages they know, Python, JavaScript. And remember that rule is you can't have several values of the same type of thing in a single column. And here we do, right? This column of languages has several values of the same type of thing. They're both programming languages and they're like blommed together. So this violates that hard and fast rule. You can't have several values of the same type in a single column. And what that means again is that here for Anne, these Python, JavaScript, 
they're the same type of thing. They're computer languages. I'm representing multiple ones of them in a single column. So that's a violation. We might fix that by just having a lang1, lang2 column. But then we have that constraint. You can't have multiple columns with the same type of thing. So again, these are the same type of thing. They're book columns that are representing what computer languages people know. And so we have this violation. You can't have multiple columns with the same type of thing. So this is not following that rule of atomic data. You can't have multiple columns with the same type of thing. Here is a database table that looks kind of weird, but actually follows these constraints that I have first name, last name, city, state, and language. So all this remains the same. So Anne here knows two languages, but they're representing in two, represented in two different rows. This is fine. It's atomic data. So let me just review that again, even though it looks weird. So here, this was bad. Why? Because we have multiple occurrences of languages in a single column. This was bad because we just divided up lang1, lang2. What happens if someone knew more languages? And they're the same thing. They're representing what computer languages people know. And we just added a bunch of columns for it. So that violates this constraint. This is perfectly fine as an example. So this is a good example of that. So in the future, to get rid of that wonkiness of having this look like, we're going to have solutions that use multiple tables. And it'll look like this. So here I've divided up even more and have more information. But I have a list of developers. Here's Ann Mulkern. She's in location 1. That references a different table. So 1 is the name of the location is CyberLife Tower. On Bell Island is the address in Detroit, Michigan. So it's just referencing, instead of having it all in one table, it's referencing a different one, the higher date, and so on. And if I want to know what languages people have, I know developer 1 knows Python, and developer 1 knows JavaScript, developer 2 knows Java. Who's developer 2? Well, I can go to this developer table and look. Well, Ben Rhodes is developer 2. So this eventually is where we'll be going. This wonkiness that I just showed you there <laughs> It's just sort of a temporary solution, so we get to 1NF, that first normal form. So that was 1. Each row of data must contain atomic values. The second one is a much easier one to understand, is that each row of data must have a unique identifier called the primary key. So each row has to have something unique about it, and that unique thing is called the primary key. So here's that information we just showed before, and we don't have any unique column here, right? We have multiple ands in this column. We have multiple roads, weeks, and fishes here, a lot of Bostons and rest. So there's nothing unique about each row of this information unless we took the whole row, which is kind of a wonky thing to do. And as we'll see, there's options later rather than the simple one I'm showing you here, but we'll go with the simple one. It's the most often used version. So the solution here is just to create a new field called ID that's unique. So here, each value here is a unique value. That's the primary key, this ID field. So this then is a table that's in 1NF, first normal form. Each information is atomic, and we have each row has some unique bit of information, the primary key. So that's what we've just looked at. Each row of data must contain atomic values, and each row of data must have a unique identifier called the primary key. Let's look at another example. So here I have a website, Bunker Branding, that sells merch for our different influencers. So if I go here, you can see, ah, like them, these people that you know have YouTube channels that want to sell merchandise. So let's say I want to go to Vet Ranch. And here you see they have different t-shirts and stuff. And let's say we want to represent some of this information in a database. So let's see how we can do that. So some information we have is kind of the stamp or what is the thing that's silkscreened on the item, the apparel. 
what's the intended sex of the wearer, what style, color, size, influencer, like what collection is this from, what's the price, and how many of the item do we have? So we have this with a Cara or Cara um, silk screen. It's a woman's scoop neck, rose-colored medium. The collection is Detroit Become Human. It's 25 bucks, and we have 25 of them. Here we have a Vet Ranch logo on a unisex hoodie that's blue heather and medium, and it's from the Vet Ranch collection. And here's the price, $43.99, and we only have 12 of them in stock. So that's the information we're trying to encode. So here's one version. I just We made columns for stamp, sex, style, color, size, influencer. That all looks fine. And the question is, well, is this, does this meet the first requirement of first normal form? Is the information atomic? And it is, right, that we can't divide this information further into parts. And no, there's no columns that have you know the same information in them. And one column doesn't have like multiple occurrences of information. I'm kind of putting things in general way. The second one is second requirement was does it have a primary key? Is there some unique identifier? And it doesn't, right? So we can imagine that this Cara stamp could be on lots of different women's clothing, so there'd be multiple of the same stamp. Same with these styles. There could be a scoop neck vet ranch shirt or something. So all these, there's not not any of these columns are unique. So the thing to do there is to add an item ID. When we have an ID number that's not part of the original information, the original data, it's called a synthetic ID. So a synthetic ID is it's not inherent to the data. We're just inserting this information, synthetic ID. Let's look at another example. So here I have a couple movies. I have the movie when they were released, the tomato rating, and the actors. That's up here. That's what I have. So the Unicorn Store, it was released in 2019. It has a 64% rating, and it has these actors. Here's another one, Captain Marvel, and a list of actors. How would we represent that? So here's one possibility. You have the movie when it was released, the T rating, and then I have this actors column that lists all the actors in the movie. Well, this violates that constraint that you can't have multiple types of things in the same column. So we have multiple actors in this one column. So that's not a good design. It violates that atomic constraint. So let's look at another possibility. Here, what I've done is I have, I've divided that up. So I have the role, like what, what role was that person playing? So Brie Larson plays Kit in this movie, and Samuel L. Jackson plays the salesman, and so on. This also violates the atomic constraint, right? That we have actor one here, actor two. So we have multiple columns that have the same type of thing in them, namely the actors in the movie. So this is a bad design. It violates that atomic constraint. So now we're getting better, right? So we've divided this up. We have the movies repeated a bunch of times, but now we only have a role and then the actor's first and last name. Here you see that problem we had with, if we're representing first and last name, we kind of lose the L in Samuel L. Jackson. And that's a story for another time. But this looks good, so it's in, a, it's in a, the form, it is atomic, but we're violating, there's nothing, there's no unique identifier for each row, right? This unicorn, Captain Marvel, so there's nothing unique in there, nothing unique there, so we have no column that's unique. So the solution is, as you can think, is to create a synthetic key, namely synthetic meaning it wasn't part of the original data, that makes each entry unique. And we do that like this. So let's see how we can do this in Postgres. This is very simple. There are two ways of creating a primary key in Postgres and in uh, for any SQL database, in fact. One is just to create, let's say, this ID number, which is correctly so, is the primary key. We can just insert the words primary key up for that ID number. ID, serial, primary key. The other option, and I'll do that one down here, let's say that ID is also a primary key. We can just add it down here. 
So both of these are perfectly fine. So either you can just, when you're defining a statement to begin with, you can say add the words primary key to it, or after you've identified all the columns, you can specify which column is the primary key by doing this. Let me save that information. Okay, so let's see how this works. We go into PSQL. Okay, and now let me load that So here we have that information. Let me just make sure we books. Oh. That looks good. And now if we describe that books, we see what the primary key is. It's ID down there. And if we describe patrons, it's the same thing, primary key, B tree, ID. Okay, now let's work through a final example of that, um, the information about the Detroit Become Human characters. So here I've um, shown the, the information we want to encode, the Cara, Valerie Curry, Orange Hometown, and Date. So let's just go ahead and do that. So let's say we're going to create a database. And let's call it um, Detroit Become, let's say I'm a, I'm going to have a lot of information about Detroit, the game. And one of them is going to be these characters. OK, so let's see if we can do this. So here I'll pause, and I would suggest you pause the, the video and see if you can create this table. And we'll come back and compare notes. Okay, so let's continue here. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is create an ID number. It's gonna be of type serial, and that's gonna be my primary key. That looks good. And then I'm gonna create the name of the character, the type text. Let's, we could say that's not null. The uh, voice actor, I'll just go with the full name of the actor, but you might have first name and last name. Say there's the home. I'm just going to keep things simple here and say hometown text. Maybe it'll be null. And then let's say uh, born. Just type date. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. So we have that primary key, which is the ID number. That's the serial, so it's a synthetic key. Synthetic meaning it's not present in the original data. We have a name of the character, which can't be null, right? It doesn't make sense really to add information into our database if we don't even know the name of the character. Same thing with the actor. Maybe there'd be occurrences where we wouldn't want it null, but in my case, I said not null. And the hometown and date, maybe we just couldn't find any information about them. So let's just insert some information. Uh, name, actor, hometown. Well, I mean, do the you cheat. <laughs> I'm just going to insert one just because I think there's a lot of quiet space on this video here.
Okay, so here I've inserted some of the entries. I've created this table. Let's just see if this works. So let me go here. What did I call it? 1NF SQL. Okay, and we inserted um, four items. Let's see if that looks good. It looks great. And let's describe that table. So we have the primary key is an ID. We see that ID, you know, we have the where we're creating a serial. It's it's a serial thing that we're inserting. So it looks all great. And it's in first normal form. Again, first normal form is this information is atomic. Someone might say, wait a second, that actor can be divided up into first name and last name. And we're thinking, well, for our purposes, we don't think we need first name and last name. Or for our purposes, we don't need Orange County in California. So the thing, one thing we might think of is, well, how are we going to use this? Are we going to search for particular things? If we're searching a lot for states, we're interested in all the people from California or Utah, it might make sense to um, have that to be a separate column because then we can index that column and make searches go much faster. Or if we're searching on last names, same thing. So if we're, there might be purposes where we'd want to divide stuff up and other purposes that, you know, it doesn't make a difference. So for dates, the born, it would make zero difference to uh, have that represented in any other way. It's the dates, the correct way to do it. The thing I should mention also, since I did talk about searching, is that when you create something to be a primary key, it's create, it's, uh, turned into a B tree, so it's indexed, meaning that searches on that key are very fast. So searching on ID four, we can find that much faster than searching for you know a particular hometown or something. Later, we'll see how we can index other columns. But for now, that's it. I think you, I'm hoping that you got some understanding of what first normal form is, what makes it first normal form, how to create tables in first normal form. It's, I'm hoping it's not that difficult, and I think you'll be pretty expert at it, and uh, all your tables will be fine in first normal form. So thanks very much for listening and watching. Uh, take care. See you next time. Bye.